Dr. Joseph, you're, you're a bit more concerned. You're worried about misprescribing, mm -hmm. but also potential links. It's so important for a skilled clinician to properly diagnose a disorder or a condition and properly treat a disorder or a condition. And let's remember that the majority of people with mental illness tend to be the victims of violent crimes and not the perpetrators of violent crimes. So imagine that you're being treated and this chemical imbalance in the brain has you eventually feeling balanced. So you're balanced. Then you automatically stop taking that medication. It can throw your whole world off and it could mean the difference between life and death in certain situations. An orderly situation and mess it up pretty quickly. Yes, exactly. So in fact, in one study, the connection between SSRIs, that's a type of antidepressant that's being talked about as being linked to violence, and violence in young people was only significant for those in the lowest possible dose. In other words, they may have been underprescribed. Now this is interesting because there's another study showed that people were more likely to commit a crime when they weren't taking the medication as prescribed. Dr. Jordan, you believe that these drugs, for, maybe for this reason, potentially become a gateway to violence. It's possible. The idea is that they do work well for millions of patients, but you have to take them with a physician oversight. And one of the theories about why you see violence or suicide when a person starts taking a an antidepressant is that their baseline personality is aggressive, is violent, or has suicidal ideations, and the antidepressant lifts that fog, lifts the cloud long enough that they have the energy to act on what they wanted to do in the first place. So the antidepressant isn't causing it, it's actually revealing their true self. Part of the reason that I became interested in this topic is because of a, a family issue. My father-in-law's roommate from college wrote him a note uh, a while back saying he was in jail for murdering his wife. Mm. He had no idea that he had done it. He had never been violent his whole life. He was an upstanding citizen, all of a sudden did something that was unimaginable. And I've covered those types of topics on my show. And you're sort of stuck thinking this person's story is so bizarre, maybe they're telling the truth. So I asked my team to pour through news articles on the biggest mass shooting since Columbine. And we compiled the list, pages of it. These are all the shooters, and there's lots of mentions, lots of reports that they were on antidepressants. This gentleman that my father-in-law roomed with, he had been on antidepressant, recently prescribed claiming that was the only thing that had changed in his life and blaming it for what happened. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm seeing antidepressants written on a lot of these pages. And as a scientist, I can see how people can jump to a conclusion. Right? And I know there's a difference between correlation and association. Drew, I get it completely. Yeah. Yeah. But what do we do? What, well, why, don't we, first of all, why don't we know for sure whether they were on it or not? Why am I even guessing? Why am I on a TV show trying to figure out from the news whether they were taking a med and which meds they were on and when they took them. We have to ask the right questions too because in that list was also benzodiazepines and other psychotropics. So when people say psychiatric medication, there's lots of different classes in there and they're represented in that list. But gun violence is not properly studied generally. And I know you and I share that concern. Very well stated. We'll be right back.